Amen, amen. Glad to see you all here tonight. For Bible studies, amen, amen. We're going to do our part four of Hungry for God, amen. amen. I would ask everyone to please stand as we pray and give our Heavenly Father his judge due, amen. Praise God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you first of all for giving us traveling grace to make it here today, Heavenly Father. Lord, we just thank you. We ask that you bless those that may be on their way to hear a word from you. Lord, we thank you that the airways are made clear by way of internet so those that are online, Lord God, can hear a word from you. Yes. Father, I thank you that I may decrease as you increase, Lord God, that your people hear your voice and gain an understanding of your word. For your word tells us in all of our getting to get an understanding. Lord God, I ask that uh, you guide me tonight, Heavenly Father. You give me what to say in the very hour. And I thank you, Lord God, for being who you are in my life. And I thank you, Lord God, for blessing each and every one of us with your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 You may be seated. As I said, um, this is our final uh, week for this month, amen, amen. Uh, for this study, Hungry for God. Amen. You know, we've already established a few things in this area about hungry for God and how it, it's really, really important that we continue to hunger and thirst after righteousness, you know, after God's goodness, amen. You know, when we're talking about righteousness, we're talking about Jesus Christ, amen. Jesus is righteous. He made us righteous, amen. amen. So to hunger for him is, is to want more of him. That's right. Amen, to want more of him, desire more of Christ in our life, that we may be more like him. Amen. Less of me, more of him. Amen. Amen. And we also know that to hunger and thirst after righteousness means that we, uh, we, we will be filled. We will be satisfied. Amen. But satisfied with what he's giving us, but desiring more of what he's giving us. Amen. Because most people think that when you're hungry, uh, you just can't get satisfied. But our word tells us that they that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Amen. And in another version it says you shall be satisfied. Amen. Amen. So we know that it's okay to hunger after Christ. It's okay to hunger after righteousness. Thirst after it. Amen. You know, I, I pray that everyone get this so that they can apply this to their lives. Amen. Amen. On that note, in Luke 6, Luke 6 and 21, I'm reading the NIV, amen, and we've been over this several times already, and I, I tell you what, it is so much in here, it is so much in here, and just as I stated, I quoted the scripture earlier, blessed are you who hunger now, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, let me back this up a little bit, okay. amen, this is the version I was telling you about, blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. and, and, and it goes down. I want to go into an area to show you something here that is really important. And so I'm going to jump down to, no, I'm going to read all the way through, okay? So it says, blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Mm -hmm. Blessed are you when men hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man, meaning Jesus. They talk about Jesus now, because of Jesus. Amen. Because we receive Christ in us, the world hates us. Amen? You know, religion will try to keep us away from Christ. Religion will never lead you to Christ. It always contradict the things that Christ stood for. Amen? So, it says, Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, because great is your reward in heaven. For that is how, for that is how their fathers treated the prophets. But woe be, unto, woe be to you who are rich, for you have already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all men speak well of you, 
for that is how their fathers treated the false prophets. Now, I read this because I want you to understand something. Where in verse 24 it says, Woe be unto you who are rich, for you will all for you have already received your comfort, and woe be unto you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Understand that if you think that what you have right now is it, that is it. Okay? You're full of it. You, 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 you're okay. You're satisfied with it right now. You don't need nothing else. Because this is how a lot of people feel when they get something. When they get, most of the time, when they get something that's tangible. Something that they can see. Something that they can feel. This is why the Bible tells us to walk by faith and not by sight. Speak those things to be not as though they were. Amen? Because if you already have it in your hand, there's no need for you to have faith in getting it. Amen? And this, this is why religion will not teach you this. You have to understand that the word of God it is true. You have to believe every word of God. You have to understand that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Some people say, well, you know, I read the word, I read the Bible from, from, from Genesis to, to Maps. But you don't understand anything. Why? Because you, you, you don't have a desire to really understand the word of God. What you have a desire for is to know something. Most people really want to know something and make people feel that they know something. They want some recognition for what they know. They think that their, their educational knowledge outweighs the revelation knowledge, and it won't happen. It's okay to have education. Trust me. It's, it's okay. You should have an education. But understand this, when you get the revelation from God's word, then you will know something. Amen? Amen. Yeah, Jim, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. 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 And so, uh, I, you know, I was going over this as you were talking about it, and I, I went to the New Living Translation. Mm, of how yeah. of, of how it reads and it kind of it mean explains it the way you just did okay. and it says in verse 24 what sorrows await you who are rich for you have your only happiness now and then it reads what sorrows await you who are satisfied and prosperous now for a time of awful hunger is before you what sorrows await you who laugh care, carelessly for your laughing will turn into mourning and sorrow and when and when i read all this and I, um, I know what Jesus is talking about here. What Jesus is talking about, and, and you know, you're right on it. What Jesus is talking about here are people who depend upon this stuff, who yes. people who depend upon their riches, and they don't see a need for God. They don't see a need for Jesus in their life because they got it all. That's according it. to them, they have it all already. All right, they don't see uh, because of their uh, prosperous ways, because they're satisfied. They feel that they don't need no more. Or they, and the whole thing about prospering and needing more, the whole thing about being rich and uh, even needing more while you're wealthy is so that you can help somebody else. Amen. Amen. Here these people are all about their own thing. And there's a lot of this going on in the world today. It you is. Know, we got a lot of billionaires. I wonder how many of them actually believe in the Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. Right. I wonder how many actually believe. I mean, Not too many. it ain't too many. It ain't too many. <laughs> she's right. She's, she's absolutely correct. There are not many because they believe more so in their product, in their, in their money. That's it. You know what I mean? That's their profit, what they get. That's what they believe in. They believe in their profit. They believe in the money. It's been working for them. And so if everything is working out for them, why do they need Jesus? And this is what they feel. And this is the way a lot of people in church, especially in religion, mm -hmm. feel. They feel that, okay, well, I've achieved it. So I don't need to do that anymore. I've achieved it. I don't need to go to Bible study no more because I know what the Bible means. Right. No, you really don't. You need to keep going. I don't go to Bible study no more because I, I heard that I heard those scriptures before. I don't go to Sunday services anymore because I've heard all that before. I've heard uh, Brother Sutton such preach before, so I'm good. I don't have to do any of that. This is these are people who are satisfied, and God is looking for people who are hungering and Amen. thirsting after Him. Amen. He's not looking for those people who have already satisfied themselves with their own self 
righteousness. With these, they, you know, they, their own little uh, righteous ways, yeah. they have made themselves satisfied. Well, I've achieved it. I've made it. I'm there. You know, just like the one in, in, in the Bible, the, the, it gives a passage about the builder, about the farmer who had the barns. Mm -hmm. And they all were filled, right? And he said, well, ha ha, what am I going to do with all this stuff? I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to build bigger barns. I'm going to knock these down and build bigger barns. And that the Bible says, thy fool, your soul is required this night. Mm -hmm. He was never, ever thinking about anybody else. And when you look at this, and we, we went over some scriptures before we went over study about the rich. Right. Because God don't mind us being rich. In fact, God wants us wealthy. If you look at all of these people, they were wealthy. Amen. 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 God wants us wealthy. The thing is, he don't want us wealthy so that we can hoard it to ourselves. Right. He don't Amen. want us wealthy so that we can put the, the wealth in his place. Amen. 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 He wants us wealthy so that we can do what he has called us to do to subdue the enemies beneath his feet here on this earth. Amen. Amen. And, and it's funny you should say that. The Bible tells us that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. It says that. The wealth of the riches are Wicked. laid up for the rich, are laid up for the righteous. Who are the righteous? We are the righteous. Amen. The wealth and, of the wicked. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. Is laid up for the righteous. Amen. Thank you. And, and you know, a lot of people don't understand that. A lot of people don't understand that. See, the, the thing is this right here. This passage right here actually explains it too. Mm -hmm. For it says, more to you who are rich, for you have already, you have your only, and I'm reading the L, uh, NLT right now, for you have your only happiness now. That's it. That's yeah. it. Now. So watch this. You don't think you need If you're happy now with what you got, and you, you're saying that, well, hey, look, it's lonely at the top. That's what most of them say. It's lonely at the top. How soon do that person fall? Very fast. I mean, and I'm just talking about statistics right here in this earth, you know. In this world today, a lot of the rich people that, that really, really say it's lonely at the top and, you know, I'm on top of the world, you know, I got everything. The next news line you hear is so-and-so uh, had a bad divorce and, and his wife won't half. You know, uh, what happened to so-and-so? He had $30 million today, and two years later, he's broke. Wow. Really? So, you know, that, now, don't, don't get me wrong. Pastor already said it, and I'll say it again. It's okay to be rich. God, yeah, God wants it's you. okay to be rich. He said he was giving us the power to get he, wealth. And he did. He gave us the, the authority to get wealth. Amen. But what you do with it, okay. the motive that you have behind it, do you give anybody anything? Or are you, as the Bible quoted about the man with the barns, are you hoarding everything for yourself? Are you tearing down the old barns to build bigger barns and don't have any intention to give anybody anything? Bottom line, you are selfish. Mm -hmm. That is the bottom line. You are selfish. And a person that is selfish will never hunger after and hunger and thirst after righteousness. Because they can't see it. They can't see the hunger and thirsting after righteousness because their eyes are already full of what they have. So we have to be very mindful. We as the children of God, we as the righteousness of God, we have to be very mindful of the things, what we do and what we have and the motive that we have behind it. I've seen for the longest, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a living testament that giving back into the kingdom of God will always bring a harvest. Amen. When you sow into the kingdom of God, you will reap a harvest. You will not get a harvest when you don't sow. Amen? Amen. Go ahead, sir. Can I see your letters? Amen. And I want to read a scripture talking about what you're talking about, right? Amen. In 1 Timothy 
chapter 6, and I'm going to start at verse 17. I'm reading King James Version. Amen. 1 Timothy 6, I'm going to start at verse 17. Amen? Amen. And it says this, charge them, and this is uh, Paul talking to Timothy, charge them that are rich in this world that they might that they be not high-minded, <laughs> right? Nor trust in uncertain riches, but but in the living God, who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Amen. That they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute. Yes. You see that? There's yes. that word there. Distribute or distribute. Mm -hmm. All mm -hmm. right. That means to give out, willing to communicate. That means uh, willing to give to others. That's what he's talking about. Amen. Mm -hmm. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold of eternal life. Amen. And so when we, when we look at this, this the whole passage here, you see that uh, Paul was telling Timothy, basically telling Timothy that, hey, listen, charge those who are rich. It ain't, they, they're not wrong for being rich. No. But they need to know what to do with it. They need Amen. to put it in the right place. They need to distribute it. Not only do they need to distribute it, but they need to put God first. Amen. And by putting God first, because that's what verse 17 said, but the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Mm -hmm. By putting God first, he will, he will show us how to uh, rightly distribute what he has blessed us with. Amen. He has not given us anything to hoard. There is nothing that God has given us in this life that we are supposed to hoard to ourselves. Amen. That's very good. Go ahead, Pastor. Amen. This is good. Um, before Pastor went over, it's funny because I went already went to Matthew 5, <laughs> um, which is a reference to Luke. Um, because it starts off with verse 3, Matthew 5, 3, that says, God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him. Mm -hmm. For the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Amen. Amen. It, I'm sorry, I'm turning my page. It says, God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the whole earth. God blesses those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they will be satisfied. God blesses those who are merciful. So this goes on to say, as you were saying, for those that lose their hunger for God, or replace, I should say, you know how we say, um, make idols, brother. Mm -hmm. Yeah, make idols, or, or to put it in a, in a different time, we say we eat healthy, change our lifestyle. God is that healthy, change Amen. but instead of them going with the healthy change they take the quick thing which is the bad eating like the quick fast food thing mm -hmm. versus taking the preparation to make a good wholesome meal it puts that they don't want to take the time and the effort to put in to get the full nutritious meal they want to just get that quick thing that satisfies them right now mm -hmm. Amen, amen. I'm, I'm glad you put it in that perspective too because what you just said in taking the time to make a wholesome meal, amen, I'm talking about that requires something. It requires work, amen. So it don't require you any work to drive through a, a quick a restaurant and, and give your money, get your food. You didn't do no work. But for us, listen, faith without works is dead. This fast food will kill you. I'm just keeping it real. Because it's processed. It has all kinds of things in it that you don't even know what's in it. All you know is, mm, it sure tastes good. But is it good for you? No. On the contrary, no, it's not. But when you take the time to prepare a meal with all the things that you're supposed to have, the, the nutrients, the proteins, everything that you're supposed to have for a healthy body, take time. 
things work. Just like this passage. Amen. You go ahead, go ahead, before I go to this passage. Okay, no, let me, I know you're about to go to that passage. I just wanted to back over what y'all were saying. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, like you said, um, you could eat at that fast food restaurant and then it kind of caused some sorrows later on in life yes. because you're constantly eating there. It can cause some sorrows. But see, that's when the scripture says in Proverbs 10 22, when we take it back to finance, that the blessing of the Lord makes what? Rich. Rich. And he has no sorrow. There's no sorrow, there is no sorrow with what Amen. God gives you. There's no sorrow with wealth if you got God first. Amen. 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 If you put Amen. God first, then that's when the world will come. That's why the scripture says, Seek ye first the kingdom, kingdom of God and, and his righteousness, righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You, he didn't say nothing about you. you. Had to go search for him, look for him, <laughs> anything like that. In Deuteronomy twenty-eight, it said the blessings will seek you out. Amen. 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 That's Amen. what we're looking for. We're not looking for for the stuff first. Amen. We need we, we need to find God first. We need a hunger and thirst after Him. Amen. 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 I see you, but real quick, I want to you know, like you said, we need to seek Him first. Seek the creator, not the created. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Because most people are running after the created and they're forgetting who created it. Let's go to the source. Plug into the source. This is where we get our power from. Our power source is God. Anything else, you might short circuit. I'm, I'm just keeping it real. Go ahead, Deacon Carter. This is so good. Um, a lot of people, they're, they get impatient. They get it right now. And, you know, they, they, they think that they're missing a lot. And then they, they want to take all the credit, you know, self, 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 to the self, self, self. Um, <laughs> which is true. And then earlier you mentioned a lot of um, people of uh, wealth, millionaires, billionaires, um, not sowing seeds. Um, you know, they some become hoarders, and some during that hoarder time, they don't have God in their life, where they have a lot of problems in their life, where they're not um, seeking God. They seek in the world, they seek in the money, and you know, it's unfortunately that we have lost a lot of um, wealthy people who forgot about God. Thought about God because they thought that, um, well, He's going to interfere of, of what I'm making. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're gonna interfere with my with my riches. You know, Biggie Small said it best. More money, more problems. Yeah, I heard that song. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I heard it yeah, before. Heard more money, more problems. Yeah. When you are worshiping the money, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when you put money before God. When you put anything before God, you're going to have some problems. I, I see you here, but I want to go back over something that you said. You know, in verse 17 of uh, 1 Timothy 6 and 17, charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches, but in living in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. When he said charge them, like you said, hey, listen, hold them accountable. You know, every morning, me and my wife pray, and in our prayers, we include, we say, Lord, thank you for giving us charge over the things that you have blessed us with. Amen? And, and thank you for us being good stewards over the things you charge us with, meaning distributors, amen, tithers, amen. I'm talking about doing what you're supposed to do with the things that you have, paying your taxes, being current on your bills. And if you fall short, talk, communicate with people. You need to talk, amen. Go ahead, Pastor, didn't you, Pastor? Oh, you want to read something real quick? Okay, amen. I just wanted to read it in the NLT, the exact same verse 17. It says, teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud 
and not to trust in their money, which mm -hmm. is so unreliable. Mm -hmm. Their trust should be in God, who richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. Mm -hmm. Which money yeah. says itself, trust in God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Go ahead, Pastor. I'm trying, I'm trying, to, re I'm trying to remember it again. Sorry, man. Sorry, man. Sorry, man. Uh, you know, one thing, if Elder Locke was here, one thing Elder Locke always says, and he's right about this word, in, in, in uh, prosperity, the money is the smallest it's part. It is. That is the smallest part of it prospering. Is. You know, there is more to prospering than just the money. And that's the way a lot of people hear. When they hear prosperity, they hear ching ching. <laughs> Yep. But prosperity means so much more than that. It's talking about success. It's talking about victories. It's talking about, just like you're saying, uh, health. It's talking about, you know, amen, peace. Amen. 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 It's talking about all those things, and, and money is the small part of it. And the thing about it is people can't trust God with the small part, but then they want, they want God to bless them with the big part. Like, how can you... you 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 won't even trust God with the small thing. And the word says that. And but you want God to do this great big old thing for you. You know, and we understand that because just like you were saying earlier, you know, it, it doesn't matter, you know, millionaire, billionaire, whatever. We see that they're getting they, they get divorces too. Yeah. We see that movie stars getting divorced, jumping in someone else's, you know, yeah. way, marriage every every other week. They, they got the money. <laughs> yeah. They got it. You know, but then you got those who are wealthy like that, and they're giving into organizations, mm -hmm. and they're being blessed tremendously because they're helping, like they're doing what God said, being good distributors. Amen. All right. Amen. And 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 those, if people who learn how to give God the glory, when they give and they distribute, and they let people know that hey, you know what, this was something that God wanted you to have instead of taking the credit, like. Yeah, yeah, this is something that I, I did for you guys, you know. Um, you know, this all came from me. Uh, and I just want you guys to look at me that way. And see, that's what it already said, don't be high-minded. Yes. What, what, what did the New Living Translation use the word? It says not to trust in their money because it's unreliable. Ah, before that, you said teach them. Teach those who are rich in this world not to be so proud and not to trust their money. Not to be proud. Prideful. That's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. Pride. You know, you want all the glory. But it ain't about you having the glory. It's about you giving God the glory. The only reason God allowed you to, well, you know, he allowed you to have that, that wealth so that you can give him the glory. Amen. 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 And the only way you're going to do that is by doing what he told us, be good distributors. That's it. Amen. Amen. And make sure that we trust in the living God first. Amen. Amen. Yes, I'm this is so good. Um, I don't know if you guys heard it. It was this guy on, um, they had it on the uh, radio. And he had, um, his vehicle had broke down. So of course he was walking back and forth to work for like 12 hours. And so somebody did a GoFundMe for him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so what he did at the time he broke his car, so I guess the dealership fixed his vehicle and everything. And they had raised about 10,000 Ten thousand or ten plus. So what he did, um, instead of him being a hoarder and keeping it, he he decided that he wanted to give it to like a homeless shelter, less fortunate, you know, Amen. someone to see. Amen. He wasn't someone like, okay, all right, I got my truck fixed, so I'm going to keep this ten thousand or whatever. So I see that as teaching others who have it to to you know to show them that. It's okay to sow a seed because that's sowing a seed. That's making a change in someone's life. Amen. Because we never know who needs it more than us. Amen. You know, that's why we have to have that hunger and thirst for God so we can learn each and every day that there's something new that we learn in life. Amen. Amen. This thing just restarted. Thank you so that's all right. Mm. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. And like, um, I, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I, I like what um, Evangelist had read earlier, and it was in Matthews. 
or your beloved yes. yes. In a, uh, Matthew 5, not love, uh, my, uh, Matthew 5, 8. God bless those hearts are pure, for they will see God. God will bless those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. And I love, like, you know, how she mentioned, and it goes on and on and on. God blesses us each and every day for us not to be selfish, not to chase the money and 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 take heed to what it says on there, trust God. Amen. Amen. You know, I want to um, re reiterate something the pastor mentioned. Uh, the passage he, he read, it was, the blessings of the Lord make it rich and it added no Proverbs sorrow. 10, Amen. Proverbs what? 10, 10, 22. Proverbs 10, 22. The blessings of the Lord make it you rich and he adds no sorrow. That word make it you rich does not identify just money. Right, right. Amen. Understand this. We are rich. I'm talking about in so many ways. Rich in mercy. Amen. Rich in praise. Rich in love. Rich in praise. Rich in love. When, and, and think about it. We talked about this already. As he mentioned, Elder Locke always say. Money is the smallest. Yes. And the Bible tells us that if you are faithful over the few, I will make you what? Ruler, Ruler over much. It didn't say, you know, just over money. See, the, the, the money is the least. But that's what people are not faithful in. They are, I'm talking about people are so unfaithful when it comes to tithing mm -hmm. and giving. And that is the least. When people, and sad to say, people get married because they think somebody got a lot of money. Yeah. So you rich in money, but you, you, you're poor in love. Ooh, that's deep there. Yes. Yeah. You, don't, you don't even know what love is because only love, you know, for the love of money. <laughs> money got to have it. Y'all know the song. <laughs> Some people got to have it. No, 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 we ain't going there. What I got to have is more of God. That's right. Amen. 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 More of Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's what I want. Because I, what I do know is this. Jesus supplies by every need. Amen. According to his riches Amen. and glory. Amen. Amen. I see you. I don't have to look at my bank account. Amen. Because I know that it ain't my bank account that's making a way for me. Amen. 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 We just established that money is the least. Amen. I am rich in my faith in God. That's it. Yeah. God, Praise God, she beat you. Amen. 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 You know, and, and what I love about that is what you said. And uh, when you put it in perspective, a lot of times what we do is we let our bank accounts dictate more how we live. In. Yes. Instead of letting the Lord, our trust in the Lord dictate how we're living. Yeah. Amen. You know, we say, oh, uh, I'm not going to be able to afford that. Instead of saying, you know what, let's just go to God. Let our requests be made known. Amen. All right. Amen. In the peace of God, Amen. there's a path of all understanding with God, our hearts and our minds. Amen. But we, we don't think like that. We think like the world. We think. Okay, well, we look, we look, and we say, oh, well, we don't have enough to do that. Well, let me see, in six months, we may not have enough to do that. What happened to trusting in God? Say that. Part. See, because right now, what you're doing is you're trusting in your finances. Yeah. Exactly. Instead of trusting in God. Yeah. You're trusting in the way that you've been saving money instead of trusting in God. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that God makes a way out of no way. Amen. When I started trusting in God, when I tell you what, when me and First Lady started getting serious about trusting in God for our finances, I'm here to tell you that we were able to do things it didn't make no sense. Amen. Because according to our bank account, we shouldn't have been doing those things. Hey. I'm surprised, they didn't, I'm surprised they didn't send the cops out to, 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 to see if we was, uh, you know, uh, slanging. You know, <laughs> packing bodies and sending them across the border. Hey, but you know what? And I just thank God for the way he does things. And all he's looking for is for us to put him first. Amen. That's what he's Amen. looking for. He's looking for us to put him first, even in the tithe, as you said. The tithe 
is only a tenth. And that's in, in the Bible says in, in, in what is it, Proverbs? No, I think it's in Psalms. But when it talks about the uh, the first fruits of your increase. increase. Amen. The Bible talks about the first fruits of your increase, right? Amen. The first fruits of your increase. And people will play that role like, okay, well, what does that mean? But it's the, the first tenth Amen. of Amen. your increase. Whatever Amen. it is you may get, your first. And people forget that. And they play a role like they don't know what, what you're talking about. You know, and look, if I'm getting paid $400 a week, then my car should be $40, $40 a, a week, week right? That's it. But there's another week, what happens is I'm getting paid $400, but this week, something happened. I got a bonus. Extra $500. <laughs> <laughs> Extra $500. So what is my tithe? Is my tithe still forty dollars? No. That is what people are doing, and they're playing with God. That's they are giving that for it to like they're they're not hiding from the pastor. I I can care less about people's tithe. <laughs> it is God. It is, it is about between keeping God's God. eyes open, right? It's Amen. between you and God. God is looking to bless the people. Mm-hmm. All right. Amen. God is looking to bless the people. People just have to do right by it in order to, in, 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 in order to show God that hey, you know what. This person is faithful over a few. I shall allow him to be ruler over my. Amen. You know, Amen. we got to stop playing these games with God. Like, we don't know. You know, all he asks for is a dime. It's just a dime. No matter how much it is, it always comes down to a dime on the dollar. Everybody wants God to do all this stuff for them. But how when you keep telling him that he's not worth a dime? Proverbs 3 and 9, okay. That's good. It's like they're playing Russian roulette with their ties. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I thank God for his grace and mercy. You know, uh, in spite of when we get off track, he's still there. You know, yeah. some people, you know, they um, don't take it serious. You know, they think that, okay, um, what the pastor or whoever is going to do with it, but they fail to realize that they have to do their part because they're accountable for it. Amen. They're accountable for it. And um, I thank God for just blessing um, CFM because there has been so many churches during this pandemic that has went under. Mm-hmm. But God, for God, for His grace and mercy has showed us and will continue to learn each and every day how to apply his word to our life so we can know what to do next. You know, um, the hunger and the thirst for God. Amen. Amen. You know, this this right here, you can truly see what comes with hungering and thirsting after righteousness. What I see is that I have so much more to do. I have so much more to do. Now, I'm talking about for God, for the kingdom. Now, watch this. How do we do it for God and for the kingdom? By helping others. We have to help our brothers and sisters in Christ. We have to help, you know, the Bible says do good unto all men. Especially especially those that be in the household of faith. Mm -hmm. Amen? So, the first part says do good unto all men. Amen? Amen. That goes hand in hand with love thy neighbor as I, Jesus, have loved you. Well, love yourself. Love, me. love your neighbor. Go ahead. As I <laughs> have loved you. Amen? He changed it from as you love yourself to I have loved you. Amen? Because people don't know how to love themselves. So therefore, they ain't going to love no neighbors. Amen? When we're talking about what Jesus did on the cross for us, The least we can do is help somebody else. When you have so much, the least you can do is give. Amen. Go ahead, sir. I think people forget that we're the body of Christ. (laughs) And the thing about being the body of Christ is that's what we are, a body. Amen. And we are the hands, the feet, the arms, and the legs of Jesus here in this earth. Amen. And when Jesus wants to help somebody out, he may use you. You may be the hand that he's using that day. You may be Amen. the arm that he's using that day to, to hand somebody 
to hand out something that somebody needs. Amen. And that way, that person who didn't see Jesus, now through you, they see Jesus. Amen. Amen. It's a way, it's, it's always used to show people his goodness. Always Amen. used to show people, hey, if you come to him, you won't have to worry about all that anymore. All right? Amen. Things happen, but you can cast your cares on him knowing that he's going to take care of you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Go ahead. Still a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> However, <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. That's good. You know, it goes back to CFM. Um, I love that the fact that we are um, the body that that sows many seeds. You know, people will look at the size of our church and say, "Yeah, how how can y'all do that? <laughs> how can y'all do that? How is y'all able to have a sister church?" In, in the Philippines, and I remember when we did the uh, the well. Yeah, mm -hmm. I remember yeah, that. Sure built you know, water well. Yes, yeah, and, and everything is for a season. And I remember when we first started here, when we had the two missionaries that stayed in Austin. Yeah. The, the we sent them to China. 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 Yeah, yep. they was from Austin and they went to China. Mm -hmm. So God, so just like we are supplying many needs, God is helping us too. Amen. We're sowing seed, not just local, but all over. Amen. All over. Amen. Yes, yes. That's that's what we're seeing and changing many lives. And you know, and, and, and you're exactly right. They would ask, how do y'all do it? It ain't us. It ain't us. Let's do it. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Right. We're just instruments. In everything we do, we do to the glory of God. Amen. So, when you ask me how, well, I'll tell you how. I trust God. Amen. I put God first. Everything that I do is only because of his grace and mercy. Tell me about it, preacher. Amen. Everything that I'm capable of doing is only because he has blessed me to do it. Anything that I do that is not of God, don't charge God for that. Amen. 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 Don't blame God for my downfalls. If I said something to you to hurt your feelings, charge me. I did that. I have to turn to God and ask for forgiveness. I have to turn from my ways and turn to God's ways. Amen? Amen. So when you talk about hunger and thirst after righteousness, after God, you're talking about doing what is right. You're talking about uh, humbling yourself. You're talking about showing more love. First of all, you have to have love in you in order to hunger for Christ. Mm -hmm. There is a compelling love that's in us that, you know, it, it keeps us wanting more love. Today, the problem with people is that they don't know what true love is. And that is the truth. Amen. Brother. That is the problem today. Most people think love is a feeling. <laughs> you know, he made me feel good, so I loved it him. <laughs> yeah, I loved it, exactly. You know, love is not a feeling. It's got to be more than that. Amen. Love is action. God is action. Everything about God, everything about Jesus is action. He didn't just say it, he did it. Amen? And the funny part about it is, when God spoke it, it was action that followed behind it. And he, he gave that same spirit to us. Amen. Amen? So when we speak, we should speak out of love or in love. Amen. Yes, it does. And, 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 and this is the whole thing here. You shouldn't say anything that's not going to make someone feel love. Amen. Amen. I say that with all sincere in my heart because this is the thing here. When you tell someone the truth, they may be hurt. But if you tell them the truth, you actually love them. It's only their flesh that's hurt. 
It's their flesh that's hurt because the, the, the flesh war against the spirit. Amen. And, and when you are spreading love, you are spreading God's spirit. The Holy Ghost in you is sharing love. It's causing you to say those things that are loving, kind, you know, giving someone hope. You're encouraging and uplifting someone with your words. Now, if they get hurt behind that, it ain't you that hurt them. I know for a fact that myself, when, when someone told me what was right, and if I got mad because they told me what was right, I was wrong. That's just the way it is. I had to sit back and reevaluate some things. Go to the word and, and really compare what your thoughts are against God's word and see who's going to be wrong or right. Amen. You cannot be moved by your emotions. Do not be moved by your emotions. Now, I'm not saying it's wrong to have emotions, but don't let it move you out of God's will. Amen. And that's the whole thing. Amen. Go ahead, sir. And, and that's the whole thing. I'm glad you say that because it's all right to have emotions. Jesus yes, had is. emotions. Jesus even got depressed. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. But one thing Jesus did not do was allow his emotions to t overtake him. Ooh, yeah. His emotions didn't control him. He controlled his, his emotions. emotions. Amen. And that's where we have to get. And a lot of us, we're just not there yet. You're a lot exactly of us, right. we're not there yet. We allow our emotions to control us. That's why the Bible says, be angry. But sin not. not. Why? Because see, you can get angry, and then your emotion control you, and then you go in further, you know, further into this thing, yeah. and start tearing up stuff, and you know, doing something you ain't supposed to be doing. And so it's, it's, it's I, I just, I just thank God for the study that we are going through. Amen. Because hey, we need to know, uh, we need to know how to just continue to move forward. Without allowing, because we're going to have emotions. You know, men were taught for a long time, hey, you know, don't cry. Man. Don't cry. You know, you ain't a man if you cry. Or, you know, you, and, and that was the worst, some of the worst information that they could have ever given us as, as young men mm -hmm. growing up. Right. You know, and then you got people now, and people are afraid to cry or, or uh, you know, when I went to war and I came back, you know, you have people who, been through some things and they were afraid to let the things out and you know they end up killing the men and they end up killing themselves and yep. stuff like that when they all they had to do was just have one good cry yep. oh, man. that's it one good cry just let man i can remember having some things pinned up in me and i was like man i'm you know i'm, I'm tough you know i'm tough <laughs> got up in that therapist's office man i was crying boo-hooing like a baby up in there i was like i'm, I'm going all through her tissues <laughs> But Amen. I needed that yes, because it gave me a release and it made me know that, hey, you know what? Um, I'm a, it's okay to have emotions. Mm -hmm. Just don't allow these emotions to have me. Amen. 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 That is very good because uh, I see you over there. No, I'm going to look to the, I'm gonna look to the north. <laughs> Go ahead over there. <laughs> That's good. We have to release those emotions because if not, um, anyone, you explode and it, it, it would take over. It would take over. You know, um, it's sad. That's why um, a lot of people have uh, go through depression and PTS because and a lot of them, um, they think that, that they would get their peace by suicide. You know, it's, I mean, it's, it's sad, but we're, we're losing a, a lot of people to suicide. Mm -hmm. We're losing a lot of people, drugs, alcohol, you know, um, where their their mental status is, is gone because they don't, they don't believe that, 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 that cry out. You know, um, I remember I used to be, I, I wouldn't, I would let my, um, I wouldn't let my family see me cry or I would hold it in. Mm -hmm. And then, but when I did believe it, it was like a burst of, okay, relief. Dang, why didn't do this before? <laughs> you know, because that pressure is off. Mm -hmm. And you know, and then it allows me to get closer, and anyone get closer to God. Amen. 
it allows me to to have that thirst and hunger for him each and every I wouldn't say day every moment because the moment that need I'm seeking for him always Amen. and that's what a lot of people need to do don't be afraid to open our mouth don't be afraid to to say you know what Lord you created me so you know you know what my personality is like you know it's me you know I, I love God except when so I can say oh it's me and he probably say yeah I know it's you <laughs> <laughs> But he allows me to do that, of course, always in a respectful way. Amen. Amen. You know, on, on that note of um, emotions, and I'm going to make this real brief. Having emotions shows that you are human. Yes. You are human. Okay. Controlling emotions show that you are spiritual. See, now you've tapped into the for greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Come on, come on. That's the cool. world will bring out the worst in you. And if you allow your emotions to flow with the way the world is taking you, it'll take you out of the, your character. But if you allow the he that is in you, that for greater is he that is in you, the Holy Ghost, he is powerful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why is the Holy Ghost so powerful? Because he goes along with the word of God. And see, when you have the Holy Ghost in you, you have the word in you. You have to now allow this word to control you when you are in an emotional state of mind. Pastor read, that he, he spoke the scripture earlier. Let your request be known unto God. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your heart. will guard your heart and your mind. What is it guarding your heart and mind from? Yourself. Yep. Mm -hmm. it, it, it will guard your heart and your mind. It will guard your heart that it won't get hurt and broken. It will guard your mind so that you won't speak something that you shouldn't be speaking. Doing something that you shouldn't be doing. you got to understand that Hungering, thirsting after righteousness. You, you want more of this word. Because the more of this word that you get, the better you can live. Amen. 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 The better you can live. People that don't have a relationship with Christ, people that don't know their Bible, and I said no because a lot of people read the Bible, but they don't know the Bible. Amen. I like the, the, the example pastor always give. We know of Obama, but we don't know Obama. Michelle knows Obama. Amen. See, a lot of people say they know Christ, but they don't know Christ. They don't have a relationship with Christ. Amen. They don't have a relationship that will draw them to Christ. They don't have a relationship that will uh, uh, have them hunger and want more of him through his word. This is why we're here today in this building. This is why we're here early Sunday mornings when most people haven't turned over yet. We're hungry and thirsting after righteousness. We want more of God. We want more of his word. Amen? The more we get, the stronger we are. The more we get, the more victorious we are. The more successful we are. The more loving we are. Caring. Amen? Amen? All that comes with the hungry for Christ. Hunger and thirst after righteousness. Yes, it does. And anyone that think they have it all, you have nothing mm -hmm. if you don't have Christ. If you don't have this word in you, if you don't have the Holy Ghost leading and guiding you to all truth, you have nothing. I don't care how many riches as far as materialistic things, as far as money that you think you got. Yes, you may be happy for the moment. You may be happy for the moment, but all those things will fade away fast. This is why people are killing folks over money, killing folks over materialistic things, a pair of shoes, a jacket, killing people because they don't know how to love. This ain't just, you know, black and white crime. 
You got black on black crime. You got white on white crime. You got people that just don't know how to love. They don't care anymore. Pastor talked about this in a message Sunday. The Bible tells us that, you know, for the love of God, the world will wax cold. It will grow cold. They don't know how to love anymore. The Bible says men will become lovers of themselves. Selfish. They don't care about nobody but them themselves. Let's not let that be us, y'all. We cannot fall into that category. Amen, brother. Amen? Amen. Amen. We cannot be put in that category. Everything we do shall be to the glory of God. Everything we do should show the love of God. Amen. It's even with a simple wave, a smile. Don't take much, it don't take much. Don't feel guilty when you don't have money to give. Give a smile. Give an encouraging word. And guess what? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. When you have an encouraging word in you, it don't matter if you ain't got money in your pocket. Amen. 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 See, th this, is the, this is how it works. The word of God, when it's in you, it works. You don't think about what you don't have. All you do is give what you do have. Amen. Let's keep hungering after the Lord, y'all. Let's keep thirsting after righteousness. Because the more we get, the more fuel we have, the more power we have, the more love we have Amen. to give. Amen. 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 Wrap it up. So thank you. Thank you for tuning in online. Amen. I pray that you have gotten a word from God tonight that you can share with others. Amen. And remember here at Christian Freedom Ministries, we love you and Jesus is Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.